If we want to graph a function and we do not know what its behavior is going to look like, you can always graph by plotting points. So you can set up a table of values with your x's and your y's. And the one thing that you have to figure out is, can you plug in any x or do you have any restrictions in the domain? Well, our first example is f of x equals x to the third minus x. So the only types of things that will have restrictions in the domain are fractions, because we cannot divide by zero, or square roots, fourth roots, they have to be positive. Since this is not a fraction or a square root, you can plug in any number in the domain. Now you need to make sure that you get negatives, and you get zero, and you get positives in your table. So a good range of values here would be negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So for the rule f of x is equal to x cubed minus x, I get negative 2 cubed minus 2, negative 1 cubed minus 1. Oh, let's fix that up here. So f of negative 2 is negative 2 to the third minus x, so that becomes minus negative 2. And so that becomes negative 8 plus 2, minus a negative is adding. And so we get negative 6 for that y. Next we get f of negative 1 is negative 1 cubed minus negative 1. So that equals negative 1 plus 1, or 0 f of 0 is 0 cubed minus 0, and that's just 0. f of 1 is 1 cubed minus 1, which becomes 1 minus 1, or 0. And f of 2 is 2 cubed minus 2, and that is going to be 8 minus 2, or 6. So plotting these points gives us a point at negative 2, negative 6. You go left 2 and down 6. Then we have a point at negative 1, 0, at 0, 0, at 1, 0, and at 2, 6. So all of these points at landing at 0, it's kind of hard to know what's going on there. So you might need some more information. Because um, I know if I go further out, at negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, it's just going to continue decreasing, and then at that other point, it's going to continue increasing. But what's happening between these points here? So sometimes you have to adjust your table or maybe add more points just to get a more accurate picture. So I'm looking at a point that's going to be between 0 and negative 1. So I'm going to plug in negative point 0.5, negative 1 half. So I get f of negative point 0.5 is negative point 0.5 to the third minus negative point 0.5. So negative point 0.5 to the third plus point 0.5 is positive point 0.375. So at negative one half, you go up a little bit, so it's gonna gonna have a little peak there. And then let's plug in positive 0.5. So f of 0.5 is 0.5 to the third minus 0.5, and that's gonna be negative 0.375. So at positive 0.5 on the x-axis, you go down to negative 0.375. So we get kind of like a roller coaster graph. This is called a polynomial function. But it's a good example of how sometimes your whole numbers that you plug in don't give you an accurate picture for the graph. And so you just add more points until you're confident you know what the shape of the graph is going to be. Our next example is a square root graph f of x is equal to the square root of x plus 4. Well, you cannot just randomly plug in any x that you want to because square roots have restrictions in the domain. So the first step is to think about domain restrictions for square roots, and you want to set 
x plus 4 greater or equal to 0. So we subtract 4 and x must be greater or equal to negative 4 and that's what I'm going to use for my table starting with negative 4 and then I can plug in some other numbers. And I've got to go greater. So as I go to the right, you know, I could plug in, you can skip around, you can plug in 0, um, you can plug in 2, you can plug in five, so you can skip around. You can try to make this work out to be a perfect square number. That's up to you. <coughs> so I get the square root of negative four plus four, and that's the square root of zero, which is zero. I get the square root of zero plus four, and the square root of four is two. I get the square root of two plus four, which equals the square root of six, and so you could evaluate that using your square root button, 2.4 approximately. Um, if I plug in a 5, I get the square root of 5 plus 4, which is the square root of 9, which is 3. So it's sometimes helpful to try to force it to be a perfect square number. All right, so if I plug in these points, I have negative 4, 0, 0, 2, 2, 2.4, and 5, 3. And that's enough points for me to know the shape of the graph. But anytime you have something like a square root, you've got to find that beginning point, the vertex of the graph. And you do that by just setting the inside expression greater than or equal to zero.